I think I've fallen for you And I don't know why I don't know why You love the summer rain In mid-July Mid-July My last name fits you better When I'm with you there's no pressure I miss your worn out sweaters Weather couldn't compromise our love I spent too much time on us And I think you got me stuck on loving You can't function Good morning! That was a very sweaty class. All right guys, so I'm gonna bring you through my day. It is Friday, February 4th. And along the way, we're gonna talk about EPOC or excess post oxygen, no. Excess post exercise oxygen consumption. There we go. So I feel like EPOC became really mainstream with Orange Theory. That's basically one of their biggest marketing campaigns about this afterburn effect or EPOC. And I do feel like there are a lot of misconceptions about it, like many things that are blown up with marketing. So I'm going to talk about it today. Specifically, we're going to talk about exactly what EPOC is, why a lot of the marketing around it is kind of BS and just blown out of proportion. And then we're going to talk about what I would suggest focusing on instead. But first, we're starving, so we're going to make some breakfast. And then we're going to talk about what EPOC is. So let's go. Life right now is a movie. Ah, yeah. Wish the soundtrack was groovy. Like I said, EPOC stands for Excess Post-Exercise Oxygen Consumption, but a lot of people just call it afterburn. Essentially, it's the idea that after you're done your workout, you're gonna burn a certain percentage of the calories that you burn in your workout just because you did that workout. And the basic idea of EPOC is not a lie. It is actually true. The whole purpose of EPOC is to bring your body back down to a resting state and create like physiological adaptations just to help you adapt better in the future or perform the movement better in the future. The extent and duration of EPOC is gonna be completely dependent on the type of exercise that you do. And typically when you see a workout like advertised as EPOC or afterburn, it's gonna be some type of interval training. But with that marketing, you're gonna see claims like burns calories 24 hours after your workout's done. And this is where we get into the BS. So before we talk about that, I do have to kind of move on to my day. So I'm gonna finish eating this. As I'm eating, I'm going to edit my stretch class from last night because I didn't do it last night. Get that up, get core up. And then it's 8.46. We're gonna actually, in about an hour, we're gonna leave to go to the gym to go do a little workout. I'll take you with me. Let's eat our oatmeal first though. Hello. All right, I just got back. I actually have a client in 12 minutes, so we're gonna make this short and sweet about EPOC. So the marketing around EPOC is gonna make these huge claims about all of these extra calories you're gonna burn after the workout, right? But studies have shown a pretty big range of EPOC durations, so it's hard to rely on that afterburn effect if you're aiming for weight loss. Now, I've even seen marketing that says you're gonna burn up to 40% of the calories burned in your workout 
in your afterburn. But in reality, that epoch effect is actually pretty insignificant. It's estimated that epoch is only about six to 15% of the energy used during exercise. So let's do an example so I can show you exactly what this means. Let's say I do a 60 minute orange theory workout and burn 300 calories. If we take the high end and say my epoch is 15% of my exercise calories, that's 45 calories, 45 freaking calories. Guys, that's like half a serving of almonds. <laughs> and also just keep in mind that the number of cal- Like a freaking rat. <laughs> Also keep in mind that the number of calories burned in your workout is going to vary so much person to person. It's gonna depend on your age, it's gonna depend on your body size, your genetics, the intensity that you actually exerted during the workout. And these little things that we use to track all of that are very inaccurate. But all of this leads me into what you should actually be focusing on. But with that, I have a virtual training client. So it is 11.07, I have a client at 11.15, so let's just go get set up for that. Then I have a little break where we have to do some admin. I have my Fit Club Fridays today, so I'm meeting one-on-one -on -one with a lot of my private members. And then I think I'm gonna be done around four. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go. Just got done my last Fit Club Friday of the day. Sorry, that's my armpit. We're turning down the mic. All right, let's chat. What to focus on instead? Focusing on calories burned during your workout in general is a no for me. I already talked about these things are gonna be inaccurate, number one. And number two, it just doesn't create a great mindset around movement. If we're focused on our movement just being a way to rip calories manually off of our body, it leaves the door open for a lot of disordered patterns. So what do I want you to focus on instead? Here's the secret sauce. The trick to reaching your goals, whatever they might be, is to do something you enjoy. That's it. If you enjoy what you're doing, you are far more likely to stick to it. And look, I sit here all the time and I talk about the best exercises and the worst exercises and what you should and shouldn't be doing. And it doesn't matter in the long run <laughs> because if you're not moving at all, you're getting nowhere, right? Now, obviously there's going to be a most efficient path to get to your goals, but even if you take more of a detoured route because you like that better, I'd rather you just do that. But the more that these companies market these wild claims to us, the more confusing it gets for the consumer about what's right. And honestly, what's right is just moving and doing what you enjoy. Just make sure during your week that you're picking up and putting down something heavy and that you're getting your heart rate up at some point. Like, you're, you're good to go. The specifics beyond all of that is up to you. Ugh. What a dreary freaking Friday. That's pretty much all I have for you guys today. Um, I think that the moral of this video is don't listen to marketing because it is more than likely stupid. And while a lot of pieces of marketing are true, if you just look at the science, a lot of times companies will take something and just stretch it so that it's like technically true, but it's kind of lost its original value. I'm gonna finish up a little bit more work. I'm hoping to close this computer at five o'clock, so that is in 59 minutes, and then enjoy my weekend. If you guys have any questions, leave them down below. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out, and I will see you in the next one.